Welcome to the studio art department at Bethany Lutheran College. Bethany is a special place for artists. Here we learn to witness in a visual culture and become good stewards of our God-given talents. Okay, today I want to talk about how to carve these plaster blocks that we poured in a previous lesson. We've got uh, several samples here from a previous lesson and um, I just want to mention this, uh, this sculpture right here was one of the first sculptures I ever made. It was something I did in high school before anybody really taught me about sculpture, but I had a, uh, a little advice from a local professor. My father knew that I was interested in this and asked for some advice and, and he sent a, a Xerox copy of a project. And that project was to pour plaster into a Pringles can and then uh, to carve from it as if it's like a piece of stone or wood. So really, I, I didn't have tools. I, I didn't really know what plaster was, but I was inspired. I, I saw a calendar image of a man sculpting a, a large figure, and it was really compelling to me that people do this. So I just grabbed a flat screwdriver and used that simple crude tool to kind of chase my dream of, of trying to carve a figure. So this is, this is the, uh, the same kind of thing that uh, we're going to do. This came from this, kind of. I mean, different blocks, of course. OK, now we're not necessarily going to make a, a full figure in, in this project, but I just wanted to illustrate that um, you don't need great tools. You don't need great materials. What really helps is having some inspiration, having something that really makes you want to make. And that's different for different people. So keep exploring, keep looking for that thing that really drives you. I'm going to set this aside. Now, I said I've got an assortment of blocks here. Uh, these are poured from recycled materials, recycled uh, bags and containers. And I've also got some tools out that I've pulled out from the toolkit that uh, you all should have and be sort of collecting as sculptors. But here, here are the tools that I think we're going to need today. We're going to need a drawing tool. Doesn't have to be special. This is a carpenter's pencil. Um, a utility knife like this uh, is a really nice sharp blade that's sturdy and a uh, replaceable blade. This is a simple chisel. It's kind of a sharpened version of my, my old uh, screwdriver tool. Different kinds of rasps and files for uh, braiding. And this is just a car scraper. Um, a, a putty knife will do the same kind of work. And here's kind of a grater that will shave the uh, plaster for us. This is called a riffler. It's got little, little spikes on it, and it allows us to get into some tight places to do a little bit of abrasion. I've got a tiny tool, which we'll probably save to the very end. This is a, uh, a kind of sandpaper that's mounted on a mesh. And the nice thing about this is that it clears out. So regular sandpaper will clog up or um, it'll get wet and kind of floppy. This is made for plaster work and it, it kind of clears out because it's a screen, but it's got a rough, a rough texture glued to it. And a little pocket knife. I mean, this is just uh, a cheap little thing with some tools flipped into it, just to illustrate that you don't need great tools to do good work. Think about throughout history or around the world, there are people who do really nice work with okay tools. Um, your motivation is really your most important tool and your imagination. So let's get to work. So what I'm doing here, I'm trying to draw these blocks in a kind of simple way, just trying to understand what I have. And as a sculptor, you need, to, you need to draw a little differently than other artists. 
you need to try to understand the three-dimensional form and that can be that can be tricky especially if you're not used to it so I'm going to show you a few different ways to I'm going to show you a few different ways to try to understand the form from different points of view it can be very helpful to draw your form as you think about what to carve in it <clears throat> so I'm going to look at this this shape uh, again this is car or I'm sorry this is poured from a, uh, a coffee bag you can still see this kind of plastic port that's in there this was the top and so this was the top of our pour there's some bubbles in there yet it's fairly level I've leveled it out a little bit with some tools and you still see these wonderful wrinkles and the kind of bulge um, from the weight of the plaster pushing out on the bag and so it's got this, this kind of wonderful irregular quality and that's what I want to try to take advantage of. So you see how there are kind of points sticking out and it's not a perfect um, rectangle. This exercise uh, is a little bit like looking at clouds. When you look at clouds you see kind of irregular forms but your mind can fill in the gaps and you start to you start to see things because you you imagine that the shape that you see becomes another shape that you've seen before so your imagination kind of conforms to what your eyes are telling you now back to the drawing this this shape is fairly rectangular um, so this is a pretty good way for us to talk about how we're going to draw this in a simple way if you think uh, about looking at an object from if my pencil is kind of my point of view the camera angle uh, from the front from the back and from each side those are called elevations it's as if we're drawing straight on from the ground up. We're drawing the, the height or the elevation from every point of view from the four sides. Okay? And then also really useful for a sculptor is the top-down view, which we would call plan. That's, uh, those are kind of architectural terms, drafting terms. Elevation and plan plan you can think about kind of like a blueprint the uh, the footprint of a thing okay so I've done some some rough drawings over here uh, some of these are three-quarter view like for example for this shape I've drawn my camera angle kind of looking at it from an angle right here but when I flip it and look at it from the bottom I see a shape somewhat like this and I understand it better now that I've drawn it. Drawing gives you an opportunity to examine something and it gives you um, really room for revision, space for revision. We don't want to jump into our final idea here right away. So to draw this I've got some uh, spots marked out here so I can label these front, back, left, right, and top. All of these are to be elevations. These four are what we call elevations. And this one all by itself is called plan. Okay, so some vocabulary terms that uh, are really helpful for sculptors as they draw. So the front elevation um, gives me a couple seams here. I'm looking for the specifics of this block because that might give me some ideas about what 
what I'm going to make out of this. So I see this stick out a little bit and taper in. I don't want to be overly fussy with these drawings. I want to find the main tendencies, the main forms, but I don't need to put a whole lot of effort into into the making of these drawings. So I flipped it over to the back here. I'm, I'm trying to hold this so that my eyes see the bottom as flat. You know, I, my brain knows that the table is flat, but my eyes have to have this tipped up in order for it to appear flat on the bottom. So I make adjustments. I'm going to move out of my boundary here because sometimes you're not right. And that's part of that, that revision idea, giving yourself space to change your mind. I like to call that responsive intent. You intend for something to happen. You, you think you know the outcome before you begin. But then things change. And so you roll with it. You respond. Your, your intent can shift and change and adapt. And as we are learning in the world, adaptability is a fantastic skill to nurture. OK, so if I just write right on here, front. back. That will help me keep oriented according to my drawings. And then if I am looking at the front, this is the left, this is the right. And so I'll write that on here so I can keep it straight in my drawings. Left, right. All right, so moving over to the left here. Now I'm drawing my particular block. The wonder of this is that your block will be different. It will be unique probably in the history of the world. It's a different kind of thing. Even if it's from a form that, that is familiar, there are nuances. And I want you to I want you to treat it as, as if it's one of a kind. The thing that that does is it helps you to pay attention. It changes your mindset from thinking that I know this thing, and it changes your mindset to thinking I'm exploring this thing. I have much to learn. Always be of that mind that you have much to learn. There are many questions to ask. And this is looking monumental in my drawing. It's starting to look like a big mountain or landform. I flip this over to the right side, so there's a little there's a little lean that I notice now that I didn't see before. It kind of uh, leans back a little bit, and that might be a useful thing to realize. As I flipped it, I, just, I saw it lean the other direction. So I'm trying to make this bottom level to my vision, level to my window here, my picture plane. And as I look at it, this side is not a 90 degree angle. It's, it's, it's tipping back a little bit. So I reflect that in my simple drawing. I'm trying not to fuss. Now this is a stage that might seem tedious, like why do we have to do this drawing? Aren't we carving? Aren't we sculptors? We're doing this drawing because it's thinking. It's helping us think. It's giving a little space, a little time, and if, 
If there's a voice in your head saying, come on, get to it already, um, just keep with it. Keep drawing and outlast that voice. Be patient enough to be thorough. Because it's a different kind of thinking that we use when we're making art. It's a slower kind of thinking and uh, we relish the process. We don't want it to be over. We like what we're doing. Okay, so, so I've drawn the block from uh, my elevations. If I look at this from the top, I'll just write the word top, not because I'll forget, but because top could be this, 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 all different rotations. So I'm going to choose a rotation. It doesn't really matter that much which one I choose, but then it will match my drawing. So this is a little more horizontal from this point of view. And there's a little bulge here. Slants on this side, but it's a little bit more cornery over here. Cornery. All right, so this is, this is like the very perimeter, the outline of what I can see from my point of view. And then there's some interior stuff. So divide your thinking that way. Think about the outside and then the inside. Find that perimeter and then just put in a couple, couple little visual notes for yourself. You don't have to, don't have to go crazy here. Okay, so like I mentioned before, this is kind of like looking at clouds. And in this case, you get to kind of hold the cloud in your hand and um, move it around and examine it. And it's not changing. You can take your time with it. So what you need to consider is the potential. What could this be? And at this point, it could be a thousand different things. You could take this a lot of different directions. Um, and so you need a little time, a little space to consider that. And that space just to kind of like handle the block, turn it around in your hand, turn it around in your mind. Think, well, is this necessarily the bottom? You know, maybe, maybe the thing sits like this and this is the front. Maybe it's a car or a lion. Maybe it's an owl. Maybe it's a bunch of flowers or a vase or a face. So you, you know, you need to, you need to realize that this is not quite the time for choosing yet. It's not the time for saying no to ideas. This is time for what if or maybe. Now, the drawings that we made can be helpful. You can, uh, now that you've done it, you've done some of the work, watch this. I can take this drawing and replicate it in, a, in an even simpler way. If I just kind of get the, the gesture of it, the fact that it's leaning a little bit, there's a little seam. Okay, good. You know, that's enough. And then that allows me to kind of think, well, what could that become? I could draw something in there. So, you know, I like, I like working on faces. Maybe, maybe there's a head in there. The hair could take up some of this space. 
you start thinking about what's contained in that block. We're working in a subtractive sculpture practice here. Subtractive uh, sculpting means that we're only taking material away. So whatever you do is already in there. You just need to remove parts of it. But that means that the shape has to somehow conform to this shape. It needs to be contained inside of that. Uh, if, I take, if I take the left elevation down, I'm just playing here, not choosing yet, I'm playing. Okay, I'll just do this again. So this is coming down to here, this is coming down to here, just to remind me. And I can put text to help me right elevation or left elevation. Okay, so I could explore this same idea from the other angle, so this would be um, you know, how would this look if I flipped the block? I'm imagining flipping the block over and maybe on this side we see more of the neck and the hair kind of wraps behind the shoulder. And we sort of see the layers. But understand, I'm not committing to this. I'm just exploring what, what could be. So if I do this again, um, let me take this right projection out again. Now that I've already kind of thought it through, I I'm kind of familiar with it. I should have an eraser. You know, it's kind of nice that this is a, a big drawing tool because it, it uh, keeps me away from detail. I don't need to be fussy at this stage. I just need to kind of explore freely. So the point here is I could do right elevation again with a different idea. What if this is an elephant? I just said that. I, I don't have an idea of how that looks. But, you know, it doesn't necessarily have to be realistic. So this, this can be a fun project where um, you sort of make things kind of wrap around and as, almost as if they're kind of trapped. You kind of make it, make it work. And that, that big ear can kind of wrap around and conform to the surface. And what am I going to do down here? I can maybe put a foot forward this way. Well, maybe he's kind of got the knees bent and big toes here. There's a belly in there. And we see pieces of the back feet. So, you know, it's almost as if this, this elephant is like squished in a box. Um, if you think about, think about things that way, you can, you can put all kinds of things in this clear container uh, as if it's like stuffed in an aquarium. Um, so let's do it again. Right elevation again. I want to remember that this has a little bit of a lean to it. It's tipping back a little. So let's just say it's a bird. Now understand, I don't know what I'm doing here, but I'm kind of making it up. So 
If I don't know what to do, I can always just like make a mark. And that mark isn't part of the block. It's, it's a suggestion that I'm making. And then I look at it and I think, well, what could that be? It's kind of like, again, looking at clouds. If you start making some, some random stuff, you know, you start, your brain starts to connect the dots or suggest potential. So, you know, I think this maybe, this could be the belly of a bird or the back or a wing or a long tail. This mark, if I'm thinking bird, could become a lot of things. So I'm going to, I'm going to think maybe that's the leading edge of a wing. Okay. And We'll imagine it kind of wrapping around the block. It might continue. And those feathers kind of have a nice pattern to them. All right, so there's the start of an idea. Where's the rest of the bird? Well, maybe, okay, we got to have a body in here. And the tail might wrap around again as if it's kind of contained in the aquarium. And then the head might kind of fit here. We'll try some things out. So that other wing's got a little bit more space over here. Maybe that other wing can, maybe it can even kind of come up and then down. We'll see some of those tips down here. And now I'm trying to clarify. So, you know, I, I have searching marks here at, at the beginning of this thinking process. I don't know where I'm going. But as soon as I, I kind of have some anchors here, I can I can go over it again, and that's the iteration process. Take every opportunity you can to revise and refine your ideas, because every time you put something down, you're kind of bringing it into the world, and and it gives you a chance to think about it before you commit to carving it. Subtractive carving is a one-way street. Once you take something off, it's off. So, you know, it's, it's not a bad idea to think things through visually. I'm liking this bird. I'm kind of thinking that might be the direction I go. And honestly, I didn't know that coming into this project. So I'm going to commit to that. This is the one. And this is the right elevation. Of my bird. And so I since I have that labeled here. I could draw that right on the plaster. And again, that's that's not going to be uh, an easy. Thing to do because now instead of drawing on a flat surface. I'm uh, sort of projecting the drawing onto this block with my mind's eye. So I'll look at my drawing and realize my drawing wasn't a perfect representation, so I'll have to be, I'll have to have my mind active and making decisions along the way. You can certainly explore this I would encourage you to, to explore this idea from other angles. What does it look like from the top? Um, but here's the problem. Once you start drawing on a block, your drawings will interrupt each other. They'll get in the way of each other. If you draw on each side of the block, you kind of have to choose one side to be your primary drawing because we're dealing now in three-dimensional space. So I'm going to choose the, uh, the right side as my primary point of view. And 
there are, there are major reasons why you don't want to be fussy with this. Importantly, understand that everything that you draw on here is going to get cut away. You know, we're just carving this, uh, these lines away, but the lines guide our carving. For this sculpture, uh, I want you to kind of loosen up and have a have a fun have a fun time playing with style. It's okay for for the drawing and the sculpture to have some flow to it. Uh, it's always a good idea to get some some references. So in my case, I should be looking at some photos of birds. I'm making this look maybe easier than it's gonna be. And so if you, if you want to, you should probably be finding some reference material. Now I'm drawing these wingtips here uh, and, and I wanna uh, make sure that you realize that plaster is not terribly strong. So don't design uh, a lot of pieces that stick out uh, like skinny fingers. Because as careful as, as you might think you are, there's a strong chance that you'll break them off. So you want a compact form, a form that kind of hugs the block, a form that takes advantage of um, the surfaces that are already there. And, uh, you know, if it's helpful, think about, think about this as something that is trapped inside of an aquarium or a plastic box. That's the shape of this block. So the, the forms kind of push out against that block and nothing really sticks out boldly like an antenna outside of that block. Okay, so time to start removing. I've got my drawing on the block, and uh, it's important that I remember that the drawing is from one particular angle. So, you know, the drawing doesn't really help me. When I turn it, everything kind of skews. It doesn't help me from the other side. I have to be thinking from the side that I projected the drawing on, or I thought about the drawing. and. And my goal now is to remove the perimeter, to take away uh, plaster as if we're sort of like cutting a, a block, the shape of the outline of the drawing. I've got my tools set out here and uh, very quickly this will become a mess of rubble, a pile of, of plaster. And uh, so I always think that it's a good idea to have an organized workspace, the quality of your work is connected to the, uh, the quality of your workspace or the environment that you allow. This is going to make a mess, but try to maintain some order in the way that you have your tools. So I've got them kind of set up here. Um, I think this, uh, this utility knife might be the most useful tool for this kind of removal. I'm also looking at the chisel here that might be handy. Obviously this is sharp and uh, just a couple thoughts about how to, how to use a knife safely. Um, you need to hold the work in order to carve it. So you can clamp it into the table. You can hold it with your hands. Um, you can even kind of hold it in your lap uh, between your knees. But uh, really importantly with the knife, Always be cutting away from your hand. You could put a glove on for protection. Um, so it's going to be tempting to kind of come towards yourself. Uh, always find a way for that knife in case it slips or something, plaster breaks or something, and it goes where you don't expect it to. Make sure that is away from you and not towards you. Don't put yourself in unnecessary danger. Okay, so, and if you need to, you can hold this block in different orientations in order to make that happen. So, 
for example, I can hold this and use the table to kind of hold it and cut down towards the table and my fingers are not, are not in the way. As I work on this, note that I'm, I'm sort of uh, scooping away from the block rather than digging deeper into it. If I keep on kind of digging that blade into the plaster, it won't, it won't remove it. It's just going to uh, kind of cut a valley. <clears throat> and right now, my goal is to just shave off the perimeter according to my drawing. I want to obey the drawing at this stage. I don't have to think too much. I just need to look with my eyes. did my thinking with the drawing stage, and now I'm just working that line down to meet, working the block down to meet the line that I made. All the way through the block. say a dull tool is, is a dangerous tool. Um, and that's because you have to push harder when your blade is dull and you end up uh, kind of having explosive slips of the tool when it's not sharp. So, have a sharp tool. Now, I'll teach you about sharpening or changing blades. at another time. Now I've got kind of a corner in my drawing here and I do want to make a channel. And so I'm just going to kind of draw with my knife a little bit. You can use the knife like you use a pencil. And like I said, eventually that drawing gets cut away. The drawing is a guide, but eventually this is a sculpture. Now, here's an important three-dimensional realization. I'm going to bring this up and show you. In my drawing, the head is here at the top of the bird. But if I look at this from the top, that head is probably going to end up way back here. So as I cut this channel, I have to remember that I'm making space further down the line. Right? So three dimensions adds a whole new awareness. I, uh, I used to have to think about how high and how wide is a thing so that I can position it like on a page. And, and this side of the block is sort of like a wrinkly page. But now, when you look at it from the top, you've got the added dimension of depth. And you have to be constantly sort of assessing and remembering what it is you're doing. And then making some bold decisions. Sooner or later, you know, I need to, I need to commit and think, okay, well, I could, I could draw this on here now, and it's kind of funny because the head's here and it's also here. And then if the beak, if I take the tip of that beak straight back, you know, I can use my pencil to kind of almost project the head back to its location. And if I take look at where the beak kind of has its meeting with the face. If I go straight back from this corner, I can kind of piece it together. See? I can look at that and sort of estimate where I want that beak to be. And the eye is back from there. But now suddenly, you know, we're going to be responsible for another eye that we couldn't see before.
So you have to you have to start thinking in a different way. So I've sort of uh, eased myself into drawing from the top. I'll keep going with that. This wing that swoops around. Uh, I'm going to transition to thinking about this from the top. So there's a wing that wraps around this way from the back. The body is going to have some depth there. This wing is lifting to a point in this corner. So this that I drew is now back here. And it's not as high back here as it is in this corner. So I'm going to have to adapt. And that wing is dropping pretty much straight down and swooping. And this wing is coming around. So that kind of gives me a map uh, for more removal. I'm going to come across this side and get my tools organized and kind of round it off. I'm holding the block securely with my left hand but cutting away from my hand into the table. So I've got, I've got the block backed up on the table. Always find a way to be safe. It's it's a little bit of extra work, but that's but that is uh, is what we do. All right, so I'm rounding this off, removing what is not needed, and always keeping in mind. That removal is forever. So you don't go on autopilot. You don't uh, kind of um, zone out with this. You got to be present and pay attention. then you need to stop and, and think, okay, what have I done? Do I agree with it? What do I do now? Okay, I know that that, that head is going to be tall and that body uh, sort of drops down before we hit that wing. So actually, a lot of this goes away until that wing kind of sweeps in. We've established that the head's back here. That means this is all empty space. So, scary, but I'm going to remove a good portion of my drawing here. You do need to be brave. I can tip this on its head to, to carve. As we get uh, further along in the carving, you're going to have to be more and more gentle with the edges. All right, so, that, and as the drawing goes the way, you know, I need to maintain it in my mind. I need to keep thinking and imagining where am I going with this? What am I doing? And I've got this kind of sweep, and so that'll be my, my signal. Stop there. I'll draw with the draw with the knife and try to make graceful curves and marks even as I'm exerting some pressure here. This is a, a constantly changing landscape. And you need to exhibit some mental flexibility here. These things are 
Things are changing their nature and their shape. You stick with it and keep, keep present. Pay attention to what you're doing. Pay attention to safety. Where's that blade? Where are your fingers? Don't try to take too much. You know, you, you just kind of work your way layer by layer, shaving the surface off. Um, you can break off more than you want to if, uh, you know, if you dig too deep, you could uh, have an explosive pop and a surprise that you're not, you're not wanting. I'm kind of carving up to the head here. I'm working up to the head that I drew on the top before. Slowly working layers back. This is a colored block because I poured plaster. Um, in two batches simultaneously. With uh, some some blue dye in one of the batches. So I've got white and just kind of a purplish blue. It's just fabric dye. It's writ dye mixed in with the water of the mix. If you want to try that, you can, you can experiment with different ways to add pigment to your plaster. Uh, the requirements really are that you're using a water-based pigment. So acrylic paint would work. Uh, I would think that food coloring would be useful and obviously fabric dye works. There's also uh, cement dyes used for making colored sidewalks or blocks. All right, I'm kind of working this form down. This head is starting to assert itself, it's starting to emerge here. start to see the head's going to be back here and just like at the beginning when I was I was kind of projecting back and cutting the outline I'm doing the same thing from the top I'm kind of cutting this outline down so I'm, I'm shifting my perspective I'm going from different angles and doing similar work carefully and if I keep on sort of moving and changing my perspective I think I'm less likely to forget something. <clears throat> I'm going to keep on working this and uh, we'll come back. We'll come back in a little bit and uh, show some progress.